On Monday, the Houston Texans parted ways with executive VP of football operations, Jack Easterby. They call it mutual. Our good friend John McClain, formerly the Houston Chronicle, says it's anything but mutual. He was fired. And he used to be a controversial figure because it seemed like he was woefully unqualified for the job that he held. People are like, well, why are you giving him a hard time? Well, you know what? Because there's other people out there who are qualified, who aren't getting the opportunity, who deserve the opportunity, who have put in the time, have acquired the skills and the experience, and would be far better suited than a guy who just kind of finagled his way into a spot where he was able to snake charm an owner into entrusting him with the entire football operation. So now Easterby is out. A couple of people I trust have said, keep an eye on Carolina as a possible destination. Although talk about the premise for a sitcom, David Tepper and Jack Easterby, good God. But Chris, this is, and and I don't know how much of this ties to Deshaun Watson, but somebody has got to take the fall for 30 settlements that the Texans had to make with people who were claiming apparently persuasively that the Texans knew or should have known what Deshaun Watson was doing. And instead of telling him to stop, they gave him, Hey, here, here, use this non-disclosure agreement. So no one can say what goes on in those massage rooms. Yeah. I, I, hey, it's all weird. I, I mean, of course that aspect's weird. You know, it's a, it's a, it's hard to not believe that the Texans didn't realize, wait, why does he need a new masseuse every other week or every week? Why does he need a new one? I mean, yeah, th- th- there had to be some warning signs there. I don't know if we blame Jack Easterby for that. I understand. He's ultimately in charge of the I football know. operation. I get it. Listen, the whole thing, Jack Easterby, I, I, yeah, I don't know how he became in charge of that. He's one of the weirdest enigmas in football. I mean, people don't know a lot about him. Most people don't think he's nearly qualified to have that job that he just held there with Houston. And, yes, it seems like – his reputation is that of a city slicker a little bit, but I don't know if he's from a big city. Either way, he's got a smooth mouthpiece, from, that's for sure. Somewhere somewhere down in the Carolinas. Yeah. And, and that, you know, we, we see in football all the time the excessive reliance on faith and tying faith and football together. And he really parlayed that, whether authentically or not, into the job that he held. And remember, when they were searching for a GM, after the firing of Bill O'Brien, who was doing both things for a while. In that offseason, the search firm, Corn Ferry, did not have Nick Casario on the list. And SI.com reported this very exhaustively and in detail at the time. Easterby went to Cal McNair and they prayed on it and decided to go hire Nick Casario because, as the theory goes, Easterby knew that if Casario got the job, Easterby stays. If they bring in somebody else to be the GM, Easterby goes then. So he goes now and we'll see where he goes next. But he's worked for the Chiefs. He's worked for the Patriots. He's worked for the Texans. There's 29 other teams, and all it takes is one to say, I kind of like this guy. I think I'll give him a job. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.